Was Jesus Christ predicted in the Old Testament? Hello, my brothers and sisters. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're off to a great Sunday. And I've done a reading on this before, but like I've stated many times, you know, reading the Bible over and over is something that we must do and something we should do. Because uh, it says, study to show thyself approved. And by reading the Bible over and over, you continue to learn and continue to grow with your walk in the Lord and to have more of an understanding of God's Word. Because you cannot be righteous once. So <laughs> even though we repeat it over and over, it's actually a good thing to do. And um, I tell people to do it all the time. Don't just read it once, just continue to read it. But um, Isaiah 53, which is one of the most incredible predictions of Jesus Christ, um, I believe that some of the old Jewish uh, scholars and books have removed it from what I have read and studied from the Bible because it truly predicts Jesus Christ and what he went through and what he suffered for us and for the sins of the world. Um, I had talking to a few rabbis actually and they claim that this scripture, that this passage is referring to the Jewish people. I will have you make your own opinion on this. We know that Jesus Christ died for us. We know that Jesus suffered on the cross. We know that he was nailed to a cross. We know that he was beaten and bruised, torn apart. He was sent to save us from sin, to save us from eternal death, eternal hell. And to read the scripture is absolutely amazing. When I first read it, when I first I was like, wow, how how how, is, how do people not believe that this is uh, the foreshadowing of Jesus Christ? It's um, it's amazing. But um, we're going to read from Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the day ground. He had no form no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, the depiction of Jesus Christ, as far as the, uh, you see the pictures of um, how the Catholic Church depicts him, with the blonde hair or the very light hair and the blue eyes and the very meek, very soft looking man that he wasn't, Remember, he was a carpenter. He had to chop down trees. He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't have been weak or frail to go through what he had to go through. But it says that uh, there was no beauty that we should desire him. I'm not saying that Jesus was a ugly man, but the depiction that most people think that he looks like is not true. You know, we don't know what he looks like. Nobody does. We don't know. Uh, we weren't there. To witness it, only the people who were around that time witnessed him. But the Bible says here that there was no beauty that we should desire him. Again, I'm not saying he was ugly, but I'm also saying that do not look at the pictures that are depicted. We have somewhat of an idea what he looked like, what he might have looked like, but that's it. He is despised and rejected of men. They rejected him. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. He was hated. He was ridiculed. He was uh, cast out. Because he said that he was the son of man, son of God. Son of man, son of God. And the, they felt that there was blasphemous against God to equate him with God. This is why they want him crucified. This is why they want him crucified, I should say. Surely he had borne our griefs. 
and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, I mean, it's powerful. The scripture is so powerful. I mean, how do people, how are people blind to the scripture? Um, obviously, they're not, uh, they must not believe in Jesus Christ. We know that they don't believe in Jesus Christ. We know that they rejected Jesus Christ. We know that the Jews do not accept him as his Savior. Some do, but most don't. But he was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities, our sins. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Our forgiveness was put upon him. And with the stripes we are healed. The stripes, like I always said, are from the cat of nine tails that were ripped into his body. And it was um, it was like a whip with about you know with lashes on it with something at the edge of it to cut into the body. And when it when it seared into the body, when it not seared, when it um, pierced the body, it would rip off the flesh. And it would, would have left stripes on your body, so to speak, of flesh ripped off your body. Which was, the, the pain that he endured was, I mean, it's unfathomable to even think about it. So with his stripes, we are healed, we are forgiven by his suffering. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was, he was, dis, he was dismantled. Not just not just pierced to a cross, not just nailed to a cross. He was absolutely dismantled. All we like a sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of all of us. We have all like sheep we've gone we've all gone astray. We've all turned away from God. We've all sinned. We have turned everyone to his own way. Again, we our own way, our own sin. We've turned to our own sin. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of all of us. God put all the sins of the world on his shoulders. Every sin that has ever been, every sin that is happening now, and every sin that will happen are put upon his shoulders. He didn't deserve that. We deserved it. We deserved that punishment. But he took it all on his shoulders that day at Calvary. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He didn't say a word. They spit on him. They slapped him. Everything in the book we named was done to him. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearing is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. You know, they kept asking him, was he God? Was he the son of God? He never said he was, uh, you know, he never he never came out and said, um, he didn't defend himself, I should say. It would be a better um, analogy of it. He didn't defend himself. He knew what he had to go through. He said what he had to say. After they um, put him through the court, so to speak, their own uh, judgment, he didn't say anything. He didn't defend himself. He didn't have to defend himself anymore. He knew what he had to go through. He knew what he had to endure. He knew what his purpose was when he came here. He was taken from prison and from judgment. He was in prison. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. He was cut out of the land of the living. He was killed. He was murdered. He was uh, crucified. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. For the believers in Christ, he, well, he was he was he was crucified for all the sins of the world. But for the ones who believe on him, he died for. Or I should say that um, his death meant something for people who believe on him. Mean everything means everything. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence.
neither was any deceit in his mouth. Now, who who could who could this who could this have been? He made his grave with the wicked. There were two other, I shouldn't say two other. There were two criminals that were next to him when he was crucified. He had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. What does this all sound like? Who was Isaiah? What was Isaiah even writing? Did he even know what he was writing? No. He's probably saying to himself, what is this? What am I what, what, what am I writing now? Who am I talking about? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Okay, let's stop there again. Who are we talking about? Who was who was an offering for sin? Who could have taken on the sins of the world? Was it the Jewish people? Because like I said, I've talked to many rabbis and they would say that, the, that this verse can, concerns the Jewish people being afflicted. Really? That his soul was an offering for sin? Can you can your soul cover my sin? Can the death of your soul cover my sin? I don't think so. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and he shall be satisfied by his knowledge. By, by, his, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Okay, like I said before, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge, shall my righteous servant justify, my righteous servant, being Jesus Christ, justify many. Now again, he died for all, but not all will accept him. So the Bible says the righteous servant justify many. Many will accept him, many will choose him. That doesn't mean that all are going with him. Just because he died for everyone, if you don't believe on him, you're not going to his kingdom. For you shall bear their iniquities. Again, our sins. He took on our sins. This is so clear as day that this is Jesus Christ. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death. Okay, who are we talking about? And he was numbered with the transgressors. Again, he was uh, crucified with two criminals. And he bare the sin of many and made, inter and made an intercession for the transgressions. Okay, wow. Well. Again, he bore the sins of many. Again, he did die for all. But not all will accept him. And he made an intercession for the transgressions. He is the way to the Father. He is, he is the, the, the only... The only uh, the, the mediator between man and God. He is the only way. He is the only one who could have covered all the sins. He has made an intercession for the sinners, the transgressors. He has made a way to stand in front of God, blameless, because of him. Who is this scripture talking about? There is one who took on the transgressions of the world. There is one who took on our iniquities. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He took on our griefs, he took on our sorrows, he took on every little thing that, that is wrong with us. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with the stripes we are healed. And please God to bruise him. The gift of grace is an unbelievable gift that um, it's a free gift that many will accept as it says here. But as that many have accepted him I would say a hundred times more times that by hundreds have, have not accepted him. 
And when you read scripture from the Old Testament that clearly depicts Jesus Christ, that clearly depicts what he had to do, that clearly depicts that he took on the sin of the world. It's incredible that many don't believe. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of all of us. I just got to say, stop and say thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Thank you, God, for what you did for all of us. We are all like a sheep that have gone astray, Father. We have all turned on you. We have all sinned against you. We are grateful for what you did. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He was afflicted. Yet he opened out his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He knew what he had to do. He knew what the will of the Father was. Just like he told Pontius Pilate, if I, if I wanted to, I could get 10,000 legions of angels to get me out of here. But he knew what his purpose was. He was taken from prison and from judgment. He was judged. The Jews judged him. He was in prison. But he was cut out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. What Jesus Christ did for us we didn't deserve. We can never repay back this this debt that we have. But all our debts are wiped away with the crucifixion of God's Son Jesus Christ. With the death of Jesus Christ. Who was a perfect lamb without blemish blemish. He was the only one who, who could take on the sin of the world. He was the only one who could put it all on his shoulders. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pledge of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Whom are we talking about here? Just an incredible, incredible scripture predicting Jesus Christ. Probably 600 years before he even walked the earth. Because he had poured out his soul and unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. All that sin was put upon him. All the sin, all of our discussing the dirty sins were put on his shoulders. God saw sin on him. God put all of it on him. Every single one of my sins, every single one of all of our sins were put upon him. He was numbered with the transgressors. And he had bare the sin of many. And made an intercession for the transgressors. He made a way for sinners. He bore the sin of many. Was Jesus Christ not crucified for the sins of the world? Have you have not have you have you not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, as Lord and Savior, as King, as one who died on the cross for your sins, for your iniquities? Six hundred years before Jesus walked. This earth. And Isaiah was speaking about him. Isaiah was speaking how he would cover the sins of the world. Isaiah was speaking that he was an orphan for sin. Isaiah was speaking that he was brutalized, physically brutalized for our sin. That God made an offering for our sin. That God made a transgress made a way for our transgressions. That he made an intercession for our sins. That he made a way. Isaiah was probably writing this out saying, 
Lord, I'm just listening here. I don't know what you're talking about, who you're talking about. But we know that this is Jesus Christ. We know what the New Testament has told us. We know that the gospel is true. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected for the sins of the world. That is the good news of the gospel. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. He was perfect. He was God. I love this part. We have turned everyone to his own way. All, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of his soul. All our sins were put on him. Incredible scripture. And if anyone has not heard the scripture yet, I, I hope that uh, you, know, you listen and you read it on your own. And you continue to read it because this is... Like I said, it's absolutely, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and, acqu and, and acquitted with the grief. Amazing. Jesus Christ predicted 600 years before he walked the earth. And this is not, this scripture is not concerning the Jews or their, or their suffering that they went through. And like I said, some rabbis told me that this is what the scripture is about. They even took Isaiah 53 out of some of their books. I wonder why. Because they have rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. As my dryer goes off. The famous dryer. You know that it's true. When you hear a little beep and hear the sound. <laughs> you know that it's true. When somebody's talking. So again I hope this. this uh, anyone who has not read Isaiah 53. Or just starting out reading the Bible. Learning who God was. Isaiah 53 is one of the most, um, you know, every scripture in the book is incredible, but this one, this this passage is, um, you know, you, 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 you read it, when you first read it, it's like, wow, talking about Jesus here, this is Jesus Christ. And he made his grave with the wicked. Remember, like I said before, he was crucified along two criminals. You hear the beep. <laughs> now, we have some laughs on this channel, too, so um, we got to laugh, we got to smile at things, too, and because we live in this world that uh, is crazy. Um, but we know we have a Savior. We know that there is one that is bore the sins of the world on his shoulders, the punishment that we deserved. So before we go, I'm going to say a little prayer to our King, our Father in Heaven, and uh, Lord, we just want to say we're so thankful and grateful for your Son, for the gift of grace that you have given us. We know that your Son died on the cross for our sins. We know that we are forgiven through his blood. We know that there is redemption through him. We know, Father, that he is the only way to heaven. We know that he is your son. We know that he is our king. And, Lord, we are so thankful, so thankful for your forgiveness through your son. We just want to say we love you at every second of our lives, Father. We are grateful. We may mess up, Lord, but you know that this is why you sent your son to take care of all of our sins. So we may stand perfect in front of you. I say this prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you all for watching. It's an absolute pleasure to do these videos and to do these, to do the work of the Lord. And again, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the like button and uh, enjoy your Sunday. Read Isaiah 53. Read it over and over and over again. It's incredible. And God bless you all.